Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Chris Rohde from National RV Detroit. Uh, gonna do a quick walk around uh, for this uh, Palomino Solaire by Forest River to 2000 2020 202 RB. All right, you guys ready to get started? I usually like to start in the front. It makes things a little easier. Um, Forest River did a pretty good job putting this electric tongue jack on there for you, making life a lot easier getting it on and off, especially with your weight distribution uh, set up, and we'll show you that when you come in, um, how to do your weight distribution and sway control. But uh, this makes it a lot easier to get it on and off your truck. You'll be happy that this is here. Um, it's got a little LED light on the front of it, right here in the front to help you docking. They call it a docking light or a, a utility light to help you hitch up at nighttime. Um, you got two 20 pound LP bottles with a nice little accessible lid on top. It opens up to get to your propane tanks. And then while I'm in here, this is your regulator and it's got a nice easy switch over uh, from your left tank or right tank if you want to have it draw from one tank to another or have it draw from both tanks. Um, you got your uh, marine grade uh, battery up front here. We put in, uh, installed for you. Uh, just a quick little uh, uh, FYI, there's a fuse link up here. Uh, one of them, the one underneath here is going to be for your tongue jack, and this one's for the battery on the front here. I'm going to stay in the front there for me, sir, and then I'm going to, hopefully if the camera can get this LED light, the switch is in your front door side compartment against the wall. So the switch for that light right there is up front here. Um, you have also, if you want to swing around and get that light, you have a motion sensor light. So in the one position on that white light, it is a motion sensor. That's the motion sensor thing there. And then in the two position, it's a light. So in the center, it's off. In the one position, it's a motion sensor. In the two, it's a light. So if you wanted to put it in the motion sensor and open your slam baggage door, the light will come on for you kind of convenient and then this is the switch for that front blue LED light bar and then this is your hitch equipment stuff we'll go through for you um against a magnet to hold your door very very uh, convenient so you're not having to hold it with your head like people had to do in the past so it's a nice little upgrade and then slam back its doors um, you don't have to worry about it you can just slam them um, you got your uh, stabilizers you got four they're stabilizers they're not levelers so um, what a lot of people do is they get a bubble level, set it here on in their compartment, or they get those bu hoppy bubble levels and stick them on the side, but it helps you level your coach. I recommend you get a, a, a drill, and we sell the sockets that you can put into a drill chuck, make this a lot easier for you, but it comes with the manual crank to put down your jacks. Oh, and why I'm saying that, you also have a manual override for your, your uh, tongue jack. So if the motor will to malfunction, you can manually crank it up or down by removing this uh, plug here on top. You put a socket on there and that raises it and lowers the jack if you uh, have no 12 volt power. Um, awning, I got the awning out. It's made by uh, LCI, it's really nice. You actually have some adjustments. I recommend you leave it the way it is, okay? It's, it, it's recommended that you leave it the way it is. If the weather were to pick up, it does, the wind will, uh, the shock will uh, adjust and, and, and go up and down. If a gallon of water builds up on the awning, it'll also drop the water. You have an Allen head on the inside. You can tighten or loosen these Allen heads, which will allow you to have some adjustment. So some people like to put those Budweiser frogs on the front of their awning. You want to tilt the awning down, you can do that and tighten it up. Just remember if you do tighten it up that you have to loosen it up before you put the awning away, okay? And then I'm going to hit the in button, which is up here on the panel, and we'll talk about more of that when we get inside. Oh, and remember if you hit it in the out position, you can roll the awning back up backwards. So make sure you're looking at black, not the top.
And then your LED light switch for your uh, uh, lights on the arms is inside. Nice big grab handle. Um, I always like to demonstrate the steps. Make sure your door is all the way open. If you accidentally have the door like this just a little bit, when you go to put the step away, it'll hit. So you want to make sure the door is all the way open and that the step, this latch, is on, on the other side of the frame. So that way you don't bend the frame when you shut the door. And then you shut the door, you push up on the grab handle, and swing it in for it. Nice and clean, very nice. Open the door. You can pop these pins right here and adjust the legs to telescope them for terrain. So if the terrain is crazy and unlevel, you can adjust the step here uh, on both sides to adjust it. Um, to bring the step down, you do this, bring the step down. Now, keep in mind, see, see this here? You want to make sure it's sitting flat on the threshold. If it's sticking up like this and the legs are out on the step, the, the door won't shut or it'll rub on the step. Outside um, marine grade waterproof speakers. I'll show you how to turn those on in the inside. This is really cool too. Um, you got an outside bracket for your TV. So the TV that's inside would pop off and then you can pop it on out here if you want outside television. Very cool. Green valve stem caps mean it's got nitrogen filled tires. So here's the thing, if you want to keep up with the nitrogen theme, they, they, they say you get better tire wear, belt, uh, better fuel economy, tires last a little bit longer using the nitrogen. You can put air on top of that, but if you want nitrogen, you got to go to a tire fill center. Um, Dexter axles, really nice axles. Make sure you lube your bearings uh, once a year. Have them inspected or repacked at least once a year and have them inspected. Um, outside, uh, I was talking about the TV bracket hookup. This is your cable and satellite out. It's not an in, that's an out that goes to the TV. And then some outlets, 110 outlets. They don't work off your battery, so remember that you have to be plugged in the 110 for these out outlets to work. They're 110 outlets. You're, you have, uh, from the factory, it's got a, uh, that's really nice that they label it, that LP disconnect. That's for a quick connect for a propane grill or anything you want to run off propane that has a quick connect. Um, and again, make sure you gotta have this lever when it's running level with the uh, brass fitting here. That means it's on. This turns the gas off to this point. So you have your shutoffs on the front, but this is for the quick connect here. You got your bumper, your spare tire. It's uh, pre-wired from the factory for a backup camera. Um, I recommend you get one of those. We, we give you a good deal on a uh, backup camera installed. Uh, Furion, um, it's already pre-wired for a Furion backup camera. You have your uh, ladder on the back. It uh, supports 300 pounds, so, so you can get up there and inspect your roof three times a year. That's very convenient for you. LED rear tail lights. Moving around to the passenger side. This is your exhaust for your furnace. Um, I always like to let people know, if you're ever curious if your furnace is running or not, um, keep looking at, uh, you can uh, go inside, turn on your furnace, and if you come out here and you do like this, and the, uh, it's blowing hot air, you know your furnace lit. So that's a good indicator. We got your furnace on right now, so it's running nice and uh, good for you. Um, this is outside shower, hot and cold water. Uh, quick tip, just make sure when, you, when you, winter, you winterize this and you summarize it at the end of the year, it's important. They got your uh, gray water, which is sink and sh water that goes down your sink and shower. And then you got your black water valve here when you're dumping your tank. Um, they give you a, your city water fill and your fresh water fill are forward. And your black water tank flush is to the rear of the coach. So this is to... Uh, flush out your black water tank so when you're emptying your toilet so you get to your campsite it's it's uh, Monday right you get there you hook up you got this going to your dump station this is hooked up you got your gray water flowing you got your toilet chemical down your toilet and then you want to use biodegradable toilet paper and uh, use your bathroom you don't want to open that up and let it flow you want the chemical sitting in the toilet breaking down the waste 
to keep your tank in good shape, okay, for the life you own your camper. So using your black water tank flush, you have an indicator that tells you how full your black water is inside, how full your gray water is, how much fresh water you have, and I'll show you that when we get inside. But uh, you'll pull that, hook your city water connection to here, or a hose, and that power washes while you're dumping. Um, try to get a clear dump neck so you can see it go from dirty to clean when you're dumping your toilet. You got your 30 amp power cord right here. Remember, it's 110 30 amp power cord. It's a marine grade uh, detachable power cord. Very nice. You can roll it up and stick it in your front compartment. You got a nice outside docking light or a scare light, they call it, on the off door side. And then here's your cable and satellite connections if you're going to hook up a portable satellite or cable. Um, down on the bottom there, you got your low point drains and your freshwater tank drain. So this is gonna drain your fresh water here. And these are your low point hot and cold. So cold, a little pink coming out, and then your hot side there. This is your gravity fill freshwater tank. So if you're gonna use your water pump and you're gonna go boondock camping, you're gonna fill up here. And uh, so you have water, portable water you're gonna take with you. And then this is your city water connection where you're going to hook up with your hose and you have constant pressure to your sink, shower, and toilet. And then this is the overflow. So if you just lay a hose inside here and let it fill up the tank, when it's full, it'll start chugging out that, that overflow. You have a suburban hot water tank. This is uh, your plug and anal rod. Okay, one and one sixteenth is the plug size. And this particular model, which is nice, it actually is 110 and runs on gas. So this little piece, they, from the factory, they put this little tab on here. So I'm gonna peel it off. And then this is your on and off switch. So if you want to run this off the heating element, this has to be in the on position. But you wanna make sure you have water in it before you turn this on. Okay, so you, you want to leave it off until you're going to use the coach and you have water inside. So uh, this is the water plug, pressure release valve. Make sure you always release the water pressure before you pull the plug or it'll be under pressure. So pressure release valve, pull the plug, empty the water every time you're done camping. And then just a quick reminder, these are the resets. So if it, uh, hot water tank doesn't light for some reason, um, these will deploy out and you'll reset them by pushing in here and, and you'll feel it. So uh, electric on and off switch, reset buttons, pressure release valve, and then your anal rod which you should replace once a year or depending on how often uh, you use it. It stops your tank from rusting inside out, it's a steel tank. Um, on the front, you got a battery disconnect switch. It looks like it's in the off position currently. We'll turn that to on. Um, so you wanna make sure that that's in the on position when you're using the coach and when you put it in for storage or you're uh, you know, not gonna use it for a couple weeks, turn that to the off position so that it doesn't drain your battery. You have an LP detector in your coach that uh, will drain your battery down. So you wanna make sure you turn that to the off position so you don't come to a dead battery all the time. The technicians here, when we winterize your RV, we always leave this panel off so we can show you the bypass when you're uh, putting it in winterization mode. So it's set up for winterization mode. The valves are in the position for winterize. So when you summarize it, after you flush the antifreeze out, you're gonna turn these to the opposite way the valves are turned. So I'll do one here. here this is your, uh, pump, this is off your pump. This is what goes into a jug of antifreeze, pumping the antifreeze out of the jug into your lines. And then, oh, you have to get behind here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, go, from we'll go inside and look at the valves, folks. So we'll see those from underneath uh, the pump inside. Um, so we'll touch on that when we go inside. After you. So I like this one. They do a, a, you got this front bed. So while we were talking about that, we'll just get right to it. Let's see. Oh, I'll have to pull that access panel, it looks like. 
Yep. So th they put this access panel here so you can ax to get to your hot water tank. So you remove these four screws and then you'll get to the back of your hot water tank to access those valves. They're in the winterized mode right now. Just turn them the opposite the way they are in the summerize. Uh, to make this a bed, this is you got this is a front little couch, and then it just jack knifes. So you'll pull up on your, this guy here. That pulls forward, and then the bed mattress is in half there. And then you got USB charging ports up up there above your head, and then your 110 outlets below. So you got 12 volt. So you can plug a cell phone in, an iPad, whatever you want to charge with the USB. Um, and then you got some push button lights up above your head there. Fold that in half. Give a little push. Nice little puck lights. Safety devices, since we're in that area, you got your smoke detector right there on the roof. Always to the entry door is your uh, fire extinguisher. And then in this case, they put your LP detector down here underneath your refrigerator. It detects LP gas, so if you have a gas leak, it'll start alarming and going off. And that also will kill your battery. So keep that in mind. While I'm down here, we'll do the, uh, you got this is your converter, charger, uh, breaker box, and fuses. So uh, 110 breakers, 12 volt fuses, and if a fuse uh, goes, if it's in the on position, you'll get a red. That's why they give you this window. So if you're ever sitting down, enjoying yourself, and you see a red LED lit up on this side, that means one of your 12-volt components, the fuse blew. I'm going to light your stove for you, or oven tops, or burners. So this is your uh, lighter, or igniter. Turn it to light. Give it a turn. Some of the ovens are wired up, some of them are not. So this one's the pilot. So you got to use a lighter to light the oven. So you'll turn this to pilot, push in, use a long lighter, light your pilot light. Once the pilot light is lit in the oven, then you can turn the gas up. But make sure when you turn it to pilot, push in light your pilot once it's lit let go and then you can turn her up pretty nice easy hood light hood fan microwave um, start and stop buttons I ran it I, it worked for me you got your air conditioner here let's do this I got the furnace on right now so it's pretty hot in here we'll go to off and then we'll turn on the air conditioner Go to cool. I don't know if we're, we're plugged in. It'll blow air conditioning from the top. These are your quick cools. This dumps all the uh, AC. If you want to cool off this area really fast, if you want to run it through your ducts, you'll shut these off and then it'll blow harder from your directional vents here, which are really nice. You can push these in any direction. You can shut them down um, or open them up. So if somebody's sleeping back here and you want to cool it off, you can switch it back and forth, however you want it. You got your 110 TV. Remember this works off 110. Uh, this is your uh, antenna booster button, so you always want to make sure this button is pushed in. You have a, if you're using your antenna and you want reception, make sure that's in the on position. Your Furion radio is right here. Um, zone 1 will be inside. Let's see if we can get a channel. Zone 1 is inside. Zone 2, outside. You can kind of hear it in here, and then if you want zone one and zone two, you can do that too. So it makes it kind of easy. And then it's Bluetooth, you can pair it to your phone. Um, you can do that at home, it'd be fun. Read your owner's manual. And then you got some USB charging ports here, and then you got an HDMI port from your TV. 
uh, going to the radio here. And then they allow you to install, if you want to install a Wi-Fi internet booster, you can do that also. It's pre-wired for it. Another little pump light. Uh, refrigerator is 12 volt. So remember, this is going to work all the time on 12 volt. It's a Everchill. Um, it runs on 12 volt all the time. If you want to shut this off and you want to shut it down, you're going to hold your uh, set button. The lights are going to go off. Okay. Once you shut the door, it stays off. If you reopen the door for any reason, it redeploys the 12 volt and turns the fridge back on. So when you open the door, the refrigerator is back on. So it, if you if you want to know it's off and shut off, you hold your set button. I'm just telling you again so you know it'll shut it down. Um, we'll shut her down again. And then um, you, this would be simulating the door staying shut. I just wanted to show you that it stays off. So when you shut the door, it stays off till you reopen it. Once you open the door, it automatically turns your fridge back on on 12 volts. So it will kill a battery. Okay. This is your travel lock here that 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 uh, keeps it nice and safe. This is your bathroom, um, porcelain toilet. Wow, that's nice. You hold the pedal down halfway, that puts water in the bowl, and then obviously that flushes it. Nice shower, you got a nice sliding glass door shower. With a seat, your drain, and then your ah uh, shower head. You got a fan. Nice little fan. And then remember your uh, outlets here. Light. Now to your panel up here. This is what I use to bring your awning in and out. So it retract, extend. So that brings your awning in and it brings your awning out. Uh, water pump button, that turns your water pump on if you're gonna use your fresh water holding tank and you know bring water up to your sink, shower, and faucet, you'll, you'll turn your pump on. If you're hooked to your city water, you don't need your water pump. This tells you how full your battery is, how full your fresh water tank is, your black water, that's your toilet, what goes down your toilet, and then your gray water is what goes down your sink and shower. Um, nice little thing they did here, when you're lighting your hot water tank on, a, on gas, this turns it on on gas. The DSI button comes on, direct spark ignition. The light will go out, and then the light will stay out. If the light comes back on, that means your hot water tank didn't light for some reason. So the light will stay out. You don't want to light the hot water tank because there's no water in it. But I'm doing it really quick. I'm not going to leave it on. But just so you know, it lit and it's on right now. If you want it to run on 110, you got to go outside and turn that switch on. And then this is your, that turns your awning lights on. And then this is your main entry door lights. And then the rest of these buttons are just, uh, it's a universal panel used by uh, Palomino. That will conclude the demonstration of uh, the Palomino Slayer 202RB. I'm Chris Rohde from National RV. Thank you very much.